The South Korea-U.S. alliance marks 63 years this year. And over the years, the partnership has grown in various sectors from regional security and economic ties to cultural as well as people-to-people -people exchange. And anchoring that partnership from the U.S. side right here in Seoul is Mark Lippert, the U.S. ambassador to South Korea. We have the unique opportunity to sit down with the American diplomat at the U.S. ambassador's residence in downtown Seoul. Hey. Hi, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you so much for inviting us to your home. Oh, our pleasure. Well, this is Sejin. And, Hi, Sejin. Uh, welcome to Habib House. He's not really cooperating right now, but that's okay. <laughs> well, welcome to Habib House. Uh, this is obviously our the U.S. Ambassador's residence. Right. It's built in a traditional Hanuk style. Built. Which is very unique, right? Very unique. Um, you know, I'm hard pressed to think of other similar examples of U.S. Uh, ambassadors' residents mm -hmm. around the world that are of the architectural tradition of their country. Right. It's got a high ceiling, which is not traditional, exactly. traditional Korean. So, uh, one of my predecessors said it's a great blending of U.S. and Korean culture, uh, architecture, and uh, tradition in mm. that um, the high ceilings are more American. That's that's definitely the case. And second, the wood is actually American. Uh, it's oh, from is the it? Pacific Northwest. Mm. Uh, but then you have the more traditional lines of the Korean architecture. Of course, the the low windows that come down to the floor. That's, right. Uh, you know, signature piece. I, I love the house, and uh, I could not help but notice. Wow, Sejin. And Sejin's, and Sejin's got his uh, his baseball jersey Samsung on. Samsung Lions jersey. So he's a Samsung Lions fan. And I'm a Doosan fan. Um, so we, uh, we're, we're house divided on baseball. <laughs> I could not help but notice your, uh, you have baseball bats over there. Yes, yeah, so uh, I've been to a couple of uh, uh, ballparks. Uh, the teams have given me uh, bats when I, when I come. And it's quite nice, and we display them around the house. Because we do think baseball is a great uh, blending of our two countries, and mm -hmm. that you know it's a, an American game uh, brought here initially by the YMCA of all people, missionaries who taught it at the YMCA, and later by the U.S. Army, and but Koreans have made it their own, and it's right. KBO is a fantastic. Uh, baseball league, and we love going to as many games as we can. And you've been spotted uh, multiple times enjoying your your beer and your fried chicken, and enjoying the Korean cheering culture at the ballpark. That's exactly right. Uh, we we love it. The food is great. The people are great. The atmosphere is great. Uh, so we have uh, tried to go to as many games as possible this year, and uh, are planning one in the not too distant future here. So we're very excited. Now, among the many activities that you've been doing here in Korea, uh, you recently became an honorary Henyo or uh, Sea Women of Jeju. I guess Henam, Sea <laughs> Man of Jeju. <laughs> Very fair. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it was a great experience. Uh, well, first of all, I should say that I saw your piece uh, on Arirang on the Henya, and it was well done and gave me actually a great background. Uh, on the history there. And second, when I went there, it's fantastic. Uh, what those women do is amazing. Their skill uh, in terms of being able to you know, see things at the very bottom of the ocean and then dart down and all of a sudden come up with uh, you know, an octopus or some sort of sea urchin, uh, like a flash of lightning. Since you came to Korea as the U.S. ambassador to South Korea, how has your life changed? I mean, has your perspective about Korea changed? And I always wanted to spend more time in Korea because, you know, just being here, you realize how special of a place it is. And by living here um, with my family, I think what we have seen is it's exceeded expectations, um, markedly exceeded expectations. You just mentioned the Henya, right? Going down to, you know, Gwangjang Shijang, uh, seeing a KBO baseball game. You know, all of those things together, in addition to meeting great people, having, making new friends, practicing Korean uh, language, that really makes it not just a great experience, but an extraordinary experience. A major part of your life changed. Your son was born in Korea, and uh, you gave him a Korean name. And so we 
it went through the Saju process. We were given three names to choose from. We really liked Seijun, uh, which is my son's name. Uh, we liked the Chinese characters behind it. We liked the meaning of it. We liked the Hangumal. And so it all kind of fit. And we just said, this is the perfect name. We like it. We call him Seijun. My really? parents call him Seijun. Everybody calls him Seijun. He's Seijun in the United States. He's Seijun here in Korea. I think you're by far one of, if not the most active U.S. ambassador to South Korea in public engagement. You're seen at the ballpark one day, and then the next year swimming with Henyas. And, and then last week, I think you were at Jim Jibang yeah. with your sheep-headed towel and sharing hard-boiled eggs with university students. You often hold town hall meetings. Um, why? Why do you do that? The reason that's important is because in two democracies, governments come and go. Uh, presidents are term limited, things change. But the lasting part, or a key lasting piece, is, is, is the relationship between our two peoples. And if that relationship is strong, then the government relationship is going to flow from that. Second quick point I would make is that we like doing it. Uh, you know, you can't fake things like that. Uh, you know, people know when, you know, you're acting or you're faking it, they, they figure that out. We just like doing it. It's part of who we are. It's a part of who we are as a family. And it's a lot of fun. Now, speaking of uh, the relationship between the two countries, um, officials from both Washington and Seoul have uh, been saying that South Korea-U.S. alliance has never been better. It's at its best. Would you agree with that? Well, absolutely. Um, our two presidents got together in Washington in October uh, of 2015 and said, said as much in the White House. Um, and I wholeheartedly concur with that opinion. The second point I would make is it's not just rhetoric, it's acts, it's deeds. Uh, you see what we're doing. Uh, we are doing incredibly complicated things around the world together from fighting Ebola to dealing with environmental issues to dealing with counter piracy in the, uh, uh, in, this, in, in the Indian Ocean. We are doing a range of uh, very difficult, very tough things, not just in Korea, not just in the region, but around the world. So we're doing great things, we're getting to good outcomes, and the relationship is popular. And for those reasons, I think you can make a compelling case that the relationship is the best it's ever been. I mean, it's election time in the U.S. right now, and some of the U.S.'s allies, including South Korea, uh, are watching the election um, carefully, out of worry that there could be a possible change in that alliance or in that relationship, depending on the result in November. Um, when you look at it, uh, over 63 years, we've been through, uh, in the, the alliance in its modern form, we've been through thick and thin, uh, good and bad, and the relationship always seems to get stronger in the end. Uh, I'd say that's the point, first point. Uh, the second point I would make is that through those years, through those decades, we've built lasting structures. The, the security treaty, the chorus free trade agreement, the um, one, two, three, or civil nuclear energy agreement, the space agreement, these are lasting structures that are durable over time. And finally, as I just mentioned, the relationship between our two peoples is so strong. Where would you say the South Korea-U.S. alliance stand vis-a-vis -vis North Korea? Well, I would say we are in lockstep on our policy towards North Korea. I think, uh, you know, we are running a very active strategy of diplomacy, uh, continuing to hold out uh, the possibility of negotiations if the North Koreans will come back to the table in a credible and authentic way. In the absence of that, our dip diplomatic efforts are aimed at unifying the other five parties in the six-party talks, uh, working at the UN, as we just did, mm -hmm. uh, to get the toughest multilateral economic sanctions which really is the second part of our strategy, our economic uh, the pressure to raise the costs of the uh, uh, nuclear missile programs in the North that are in violation of international law. And finally, defense and deterrence. Our two militaries work every day to ensure that there's a robust uh, defensive posture here that provides a very credible deterrent and keeps the Korean people uh, safe here on the Korean Peninsula. By the end of your term here, what would you like to have achieved? You know, on a personal level, you know, that I've got a number of goals, uh, but, you know, I'd like to get to every single UNESCO World Heritage Site here in Korea. I'd like to get to uh, all the KBO baseball parks. I'd like for my Korean uh, to get to a certain level. Uh, you know, there's a number of those kind of goals. But I think ultimately what's really important are the professional goals. And the professional goals is actually embodied in a pretty simple sentence. It's, I want to leave the relationship in a better place than I inherited from my successor. Leave uh, that piece, that stone in place that the next person can come in, build upon that, and keep the alliance moving to where it is naturally headed. 
a very solid, uh, prosperous, peaceful uh, relationship between our very great nations. Well, I have a feeling that you will achieve that goal, both for your personal goals and professional goals by the end of your term here. And I hope to see you again before your term ends. No, thank you. And thanks for taking the time. Uh, we really appreciate uh, having Arian here uh, in Habib House. Thank you. Thanks.